In this report, I share the cost to retire on a South Asian beach, including rents, utilities, groceries, restaurants, transportation, and other expenses for low to middle range living costs. Last month, we put our feet on the ground on the southern beaches of Sri Lanka. I previously lived in or visited 67 countries in my life, so Sri Lanka is my 68th country. When I left the USA 17 plus years ago, I first lived in India for almost three years where I was teaching. Honestly, Sri Lanka feels like a mellow version of India. It's not as crowded and people seem to be living at a slower pace. With more wide open spaces and fewer crowds, it feels more relaxed and less competitive than India. However, there were many similarities such as the colorful clothing, the curries, and the laid-back atmosphere at the beaches. I found the beaches of southern Sri Lanka to be even more chill than the beaches of Goa and Palalum in India. While in Sri Lanka, we also visited mountains at higher elevations to investigate cooler weather, so subscribe so you won't miss those reports. In this report, I show you the food we ate, the things we did for fun, the cost of living here, and which beaches we visited in southern Sri Lanka. The shortest distance between India and Sri Lanka is about 55 kilometers or 34 miles across the Paul Strait. But we flew to the capital of Sri Lanka called Colombo and landed after midnight. Don't forget to check if you need an e-visa at the official Sri Lankan government webpage link provided. The application is not complicated at all. The visa will arrive by email in less than a week. Also, don't forget to get your arrival card online a day or so before you fly. Link to that also. After landing at the airport in Colombo at around 3 a.m., we spent the night in a hotel near the airport for $22 per night at the Kansai Airport Hotel, link provided. In the morning, we took an Uber taxi to the Matha Colombo Highway bus stop bus station where we jumped on an AC Express Highway bus to Matara Expressway bus stand in Matara, Sri Lanka, links provided. The bus was AC Highway Express bus. It was $4 per person and included luggage. When the bus arrived at the Matara bus stand, we took an Uber taxi to our Airbnb accommodations in Marissa. The Uber was about five bucks, but we later learned the local buses that run along the coast would have cost about 70 SLR or 23 cents USD per person to get to Marissa. And they stop at the same bus stand and pass every five minutes, so it wouldn't have been a problem. While visiting the southern beaches of Sri Lanka, we spent time in Marissa, Matara, Waligama, Unawatuna, and Gale. We cover the above three beaches, Waligama, Marissa, and Matara, in this report, and we'll cover Gale and Unawatuna next week, so subscribe for those. We recommend that you spend time in multiple places along the southern beaches of Sri Lanka before picking your favorite. Also, as mentioned above, a third report will cover cooler mountain highlands, for wa so watch for that also. I will now share my southern beaches of Sri Lanka desirability factors such as walkability, internet, food, weather, things to do, social considerations, visa, real estate, expat community, and healthcare. But first, I'll share my living cost estimates ranging from low to middle for, for the southern beaches of Sri Lanka. You should know that our below estimated living costs are more than double what an Australian we met there is able to live on in Sri, in Sri Lanka. I'll put a link to that video below in case you want to find out what his living costs are. Okay, estimating costs of living in the southern beaches of Sri Lanka. Here's my estimated cost of living converted into US dollars if the two of us moved to the southern beaches year-round on a tight budget. 
We also include more typical expenses. We've heard from other expats to give you another data point. Rents. I found this furnished two-bedroom, one-bath villa for rent for 105k Sri Lankan rupees or 348 US dollars per month on a 12-month rental rate in the city of Waligama, our favorite of the three beaches. If you rent for a shorter period of time on Airbnb, it would be much more expensive. If you rented a larger home or townhouse, the rent would be higher, about 500 per month. Here's the process we use to find great apartments. So we'll show you a table of all of the expenses in a moment. We'll use $348 per month for our lower rent estimate and $500 per month for the middle cost of living estimate for expats who want more space. Okay, utilities. We estimate that the year-round average for our utilities would be about $50 US per month. The utilities would be more expensive. Uh, expensive for expat that rent the larger space or about 70 USD per month. Groceries. We normally shop for fresh fruits and vegetables in the wet markets to save money rather than the more expensive grocery stores, but also shop in grocery stores for things like shampoo and detergents. We estimate about $250 per month for groceries. Other expats are likely to shop more in the expensive grocery stores uh, more often and spend more like 400 per month on groceries. Restaurants. We would go out to eat two or three times per week, mostly in, in more local style restaurants, averaging about $3.50 to $5 per meal, but also in tourist or expat style restaurants about once a week for eight fifty US per meal per person. If you add that up, we would spend about $45 per week or $180 per month in restaurants for the two of us. Other expats are more likely to eat more Western-style foods in expensive expat-style restaurants and less in the local-style restaurants, so they would likely spend around $300 per month for two people in restaurants. Okay, cell phone data. The cost to recharge our Mobitel prepaid smartphone service was about 4 bucks per month. My Android phone will act as a hotspot so we can both be on the internet at the same time when we're out of the house together. Other expats are likely to buy two prepaid SIM cards, so they would spend about $8 per month. Okay, laundry. We would spend about $45 per month sending out our laundry. Drinking water. We would spend about $12 per month for reverse osmosis drinking water. Internet. 80 megabits per second up and down is about $10 US for in-home Wi-Fi. Transportation, we would take local buses along the coast to visit other cities and beaches for a change of pace. The buses usually run around 70 Sri Lankan rupees, which is about 23 USD cents per person each way. We estimate about $16 per month for the two of us for transportation. Other expats might walk less and spend more on transportation like Uber taxi, so $80 per month. Okay, alcohol, which is optional. Large local beers or Lion beers are 500 mil size, which are large size in local bars and restaurants are $2.66 during happy hour. So we would spend about 120 per month on alcohol for the two of us. Many other expats would spend a higher amount for imported foreign or craft beers in expat bars, so about 240 per month for two people, assuming they are not buying imported whiskey or wine. Okay, entertainment, of course, which is optional. We would budget about 200 per month for entertainment for the two of us. We generally enjoy more do-it-yourself kinds of entertainment, so expats would spend a little more than us, maybe 300 per month for two of them. Okay, estimated cost of living, southern beaches of Sri Lanka. This is for Waligama, Sri Lanka. Okay, rent, 348 Utilities, 50 Groceries, 250 Restaurants, 180 Cell data, 4 Laundry, 45 Drinking water, 12 Internet, 10 And transportation, 16 All in dollars. If you add that up, it's $915 per month for the basic costs. 
If you add optional alcohol for 120, that would put you at $1,035 per month. And if you add entertainment for 200, that would put you at $1,235 per month for the lower estimate. For the middle estimate with uh, the, the basic costs uh, with the higher rents and everything would be $1,425 per month. With the higher alcohol costs would be $1,665 and higher entertainment would put it at $1,965 per month. The above lower estimated cost of living would be if the two, if the two of us lived in Waligama, Sri Lanka on a tight budget. The middle estimate is just an example of what other expats might spend uh, in the middle range if they moved here. To understand what it would cost you to live here, you must put your feet on the ground and see how you would choose to live, eat, and entertain yourself and add it all up. It doesn't matter what anyone else spends because we are all different. Why we would live in Waligama. After spending time on the southern beaches of Sri Lanka, including Marissa, Matara, and Waligama, we have decided we would live in Waligama for the following reasons. Marissa's lovely, but it's 60% tourists walking around, so the food and accommodations were much higher. Marissa seemed to be attracting international tourists who were able to pay more for food and accommodations, so it was in an inflationary spiral upwards. Matara is just the opposite. It seems like it's 99% locals and doesn't seem to offer enough foreign foods. So when you feel like chilling on the beach of Matara, it doesn't seem to have the relaxed happy hours with chill music that international tourists are looking for. Wali Gama seem to be a nice mix. There are tourists chasing foreign foods and a chill happy hour and nightlife scene but it was a more diverse population that also included many locals and tourists. Just a few blocks back from the beach is a Sri Lankan village full of locals with all the great foods, cheap shopping and everyday stuff like stores and wet markets. So we can live like a local and chill on the beach with a foreign vibe when the mood strikes. That's why we picked a Waligama for the place to live above, and we'll now discuss the livability factors with a Waligama in mind. Waligama Sri Lanka livability factors. Before you move anywhere outside your home country, make sure to create a list of things you must have for your happy retirement. Here are my livability factors, and I will rank each as high, medium, or low before assigning an overall retirement desirability score to Wali Gama, Sri Lanka. Walkability, high. We would walk everywhere in Wali Gama. When we wanted to go to another town in Sri Lanka, we would just ride the local buses. Many of the other beaches in southern Sri Lanka are just 70 uh, Sri Lankan rupees or 23 cents per person each way on the local buses. Internet, medium. In-home Wi-Fi alone is not as reliable in Sri Lanka as it is, say, in Malaysia or Thailand. So I would suggest also having a smartphone that acts as a hotspot, as a backup when your in-home Wi-Fi goes out of whack. Okay, food. I would say medium. You will find local places off the beaten tourist path that have veggie curries for as little as 800 Sri Lankan rupees or $2.66 USD per meal. But you should be prepared to buy ingredients at the wet markets and grocery stores and to make dishes at home or you'll eventually get bored of eating the same dishes. Many Western style restaurants will serve foods from home. They will not always taste as good as what you would expect at home and will be expensive as compared to local Sri Lankan dishes. Okay, weather, I would say medium. Daily highs average from 84 Fahrenheit, which is 29 Celsius in July, to 90 Fahrenheit, which is 32 Celsius in March. Nightly lows average from 75 Fahrenheit or 25 Celsius in November to 79 Fahrenheit or 26 Celsius in September. It rains 7.7 inches or 195 millimeters in November and 1.7 inches or 43 millimeters in February. So that'll give you an idea of when the rainy season is. Okay, things to do. 
Hi, if you're interested in ocean and beach life, such as surfing, windsurfing, kite surfing, fishing, deep sea fishing, wave runners, scuba, snorkeling, yoga, or running on the beach or swimming for exercise, or any other outdoor activity on the beach, then Sri Lanka Southern Beaches will be your cup of tea. Okay, social considerations. Uh, I would say medium. Sri Lanka was a former English colony, and no matter where you go, people are able to communicate with you in English. The people are very friendly and nice. I don't believe you'll face any additional challenges because you are a foreigner. There does not seem to be as many expats from the West retired here, but there are Europeans, Australians, and Russians all over the place visiting or vacationing here. Okay, expat community. You'll see expats from all over the world here, but it's still relatively undiscovered by Westerners as compared to other parts of Asia. Here are a few Facebook expat pages that cater explicitly explicitly to expats uh, from overseas living in Sri Lanka. Uh, there's three links here. Uh, these online expat communities are great for learning all about things that expats want to learn when they first move overseas. But do check each before asking any specific questions. You'll often find that someone has answered your questions uh, recently, so don't waste their time by asking the same question again before reading the previous questions and answers. That way, they will be willing to answer any new questions you have that have not been answered yet, if you show that respect. Okay, medical. The quality of healthcare services in Sri Lanka in both private and public sectors, while better than in most developing countries, still lags behind those offered in more advanced country, countries. A large number of private hospitals have appeared in Sri Lanka due to the rising income of people and demand for private health care services. They provide much more luxurious service than government hospitals, but they are mostly limited to Colombo and its suburbs and also have higher prices. Some of the best-known private hospitals are Nawalaka, Asiri, Hemas, Lanka, and Durdans, and they're all linked. They're all the names are below. Uh, public health care is free of cost to expats, but medicines are not. Expats may be asked to donate to medical facilities from time to time. Okay, tourist visas. Tourists wishing to stay more than 30 days in Sri Lanka may apply for an extension for a maximum of 270 days from the date of arrival. The extensions may be awarded in 30, 60, and 90 days at a time. Then the tourists must do a visa run to another country and come back to start the whole process over again for 270 more days. There is a retirement visa available. Uh, it's not called that, but any foreign national over 55 years of age can apply for a long stay visa renewable in two year blocks. It requires 15,000 US or the equivalent in a fixed deposit account in approved Sri Lankan bank and must show a monthly remittance or income of 1500 or the equivalent in an approved foreign currency for the principal applicant and 750 or the equivalent in an approved foreign currency for each spouse and dependent child. The application must include the bank statements, a police clearance from the country of domicile, and a marriage certificate if the visa uh, requires if a visa is required for your spouse. Okay, real estate. Foreigners can own real estate via corporation with a trustee owning 51%. However, I do not recommend buying real estate in a foreign country until you've lived there for at least two years. You should also get your own lawyer that has no conflict of interest. For example, do not use a lawyer recommended by your real estate broker or by a local lover. Okay, Southern Beaches of Sri Lanka. Overall desirability score, I would say medium. Although Sri Lanka is a lovely place to visit, if I were going to settle down today for more than a year or two, I would more likely pick any of my favorite top places to retire in the world as I shared in this video link provided. 
what would it cost you to live in Sri Lanka? To get a better understanding of what it costs you to live in, in Sri Lanka, uh, watch this video, Nine Reasons You Can't Retire on $1,000 Per Month. Most people will likely be unable to retire on the lower range estimate above. I give example reasons why in this report, plus the other report explains how to avoid coming home early with your tail between your legs. Also, if you're going to try to retire cheap overseas, make sure to read my report, The Two Biggest Risks of Retiring Early for Cheap, offshore, which explains why you should have emergency funds available for an unexpected large expenses. You should also add anything to the table that you spend money on in your home country that's not listed in the above table I just showed you. Presumably, you find those things necessary in life. To do that, visit Numbio for Weligama and add anything not mention in the table that you spend money on in your home country. Never move anywhere until you visit it first personally to verify the living costs for your lifestyle needs. I'm not guaranteeing these prices. These are just my notes and estimates from the time of my visit in this post. Your costs will likely be drastically different depending on your lifestyle. Many of the expats we meet living overseas are self-insured for medical care. That means not everyone buys health insurance when they move overseas. That probably sounds crazy to you. I didn't carry medical insurance for my first 17 years living overseas, but last year I bought medical insurance. If you're wondering what it costs and what it covers, watch my medical insurance video uh, at this link. This is not an affiliate link. More typical expat living costs in Sri Lanka range from about $1,500 to $3,000 per month. But people spending that much often have higher savings, incomes, or pensions. They often report spending more on accommodations, entertainment, eating out more, and traveling and alcohol. Many also have more expensive houses, cars, or apartments. Um, the, where we stayed in the southern beaches of Sri Lanka is at the first link in the notes below this YouTube video. It was $15 per night uh, plus Airbnb fees. Uh, the restaurants and bars we ate at or ate and drank at are also uh, at that link below this video along with all the other links I mentioned uh, at all of the cities we visited in uh, the Sri Lankan southern beaches along with the stores we shopped in and uh, where and the wet markets. So thanks for watching our video cost to retire on southern beaches of Sri Lanka. Click the video in the upper right hand corner of the screen now if you'd like to learn how this Australian lives on $400 per month in Sri Lanka. And grab a free copy of my ebook if you'd like to know how I was able to retire early and start traveling the world more than 17 years ago. Have a great day.